Well, that was one very excited German commentating Usain Bolt as he broke the record for the 100 meter sprint. In order to do that, Usain Bolt had to use energy in the form of ATP, and he generated that energy through a process called cellular respiration. Cellular respiration is the process by which all living organisms, with the exception of archaea bacteria, get their energy. Glucose is the primary source of energy that is used to drive the metabolic pathways in cells. Glucose molecules are broken down in cells in order to release energy in the form of ATP. And this reaction is known as aerobic cellular respiration and is summarized as glucose plus oxygen is broken down to give you carbon dioxide, water, and ATP. The word aerobic refers to the fact that oxygen needs to be present in order for this reaction to occur. Most animals, plants, protists, fungi, and bacteria are aerobes, meaning they all require oxygen for cellular respiration. However, many microorganisms live in environments where oxygen is not always present, and these organisms are called anaerobes. For all organisms, the breakdown of glucose starts with a biochemical pathway called glycolysis. And glycolysis is an anaerobic process, which means it occurs in the absence of oxygen. Glycolysis takes place in the cytosol of cells. And this biochemical pathway is made up of 10 reactions, each of which is controlled by specific enzymes. Glycolysis breaks down glucose into two molecules called pyruvate. And it also releases two ATP molecules. These two ATP molecules may be sufficient as an energy source for certain microorganisms, but it's not enough energy for multicellular organisms. The steps that occur after glycolysis depend on whether oxygen is present or absent. In eukaryotic cells that are supplied with enough oxygen, the two pyruvate molecules formed in glycolysis enter into the mitochondrion, where oxygen is present. A series of steps occur within the mitochondrion that result in the production of 34 ATP molecules. Oxygen is a critical reactant in this process. Carbon dioxide and water are also products of this reaction. This means that aerobic respiration yields a total of 36 ATP. When you combine the two ATP produced in glycolysis and the 34 ATP that were produced in the mitochondrion. The efficient process of aerobic cellular respiration can only occur if there is enough oxygen present in cells. However, if oxygen is not present, organisms can still produce energy through anaerobic cellular respiration. Many bacteria and protists still live in environments where oxygen is absent or not always available, and as such they produce ATP using anaerobic pathways. And these organisms have evolved many biochemical pathways that allow glycolysis to continue by using molecules other than oxygen. Eukaryotes have also evolved a way of producing energy through anaerobic respiration. And the two most common forms of anaerobic cellular respiration in eukaryotes are alcohol fermentation and lactic acid fermentation. Many microorganisms, including yeasts and some bacteria, carry out anaerobic cellular respiration. And the products of this process are carbon dioxide, ethanol, and 2-ATP. And this is the process that is used by humans to make wine, beer, and bread. Yeast is the microorganism that is used to make these food products. When yeast undergoes aerobic respiration, it produces ethanol, which is the alcohol in drinks, and carbon dioxide, which is the gas that makes bread rise. Yeasts cannot make use of the eth ethanol. It can't be broken down or reconverted into carbohydrate. 
It's also toxic if it's allowed to accumulate above certain concentrations. And as such, yeast can only produce energy through anaerobic respiration for a short amount of time or it kills the yeast cells. Yeast grows much better in aerobic conditions. This situation is the same for plants. Many plants can respire anaerobically, such as while they are germinating, but eventually they need to respire aerobically in order to keep living. Anaerobic respiration can also occur in animals, and this type of anaerobic respiration is called lactic acid fermentation. And this is because it produces lactic acid and 2 ATP. Our bodies generate the majority of its energy using aerobic methods. However, in some circumstances, our oxygen is not delivered to our muscles fast enough for aerobic respiration to continue. For example, during strenuous exercise. In these instances, muscles generate energy anaerobically through lactic acid fermentation. And this results in a buildup of lactic acid in the muscles, which can result in soreness and discomfort, particularly the next day after strenuous exercise. When oxygen becomes available again, the lactic acid reverts back to pyruvate, allowing aerobic respiration to continue. Aerobic respiration produces a lot more energy than anaerobic respiration, and this is because glucose is not broken down as completely in anaerobic respiration as it is in aerobic respiration, meaning that less energy is released.